Greetings and welcome to the uh, construction videos for the dead spatula construction. That sounds wrong. Dead spatula creations. Uh, Rocky Horror Laser. Um, now, um, in constructing this, you're going to have to do it over about three days if you're using the E6000. Uh, as I mentioned, E6000 has about a 24-hour cure time, and you don't want to try to be putting it together while pieces, and you're going to start fighting over dry times. Not good. Um, so uh, I'm gonna. this is going to be addressed in three steps. Gluing the halves together, gluing the curves onto the base, and then gluing the tines onto the uh, whole piece. Um, it's actually very simple. I've tried to idiot-proof it in as many places as I can. So uh, let's get started. Uh, first off, you'll want both your base pieces and five pins. So, in editing these videos, I realized I provided some advice, uh, which is contrary to what I would actually like to provide. Um, when, uh, in the following steps, I tell you to check to make sure the pins fit in the holes. Um, I, I, I tell you that uh, I've tried to make it so that all the holes will fit the pins when uh, I produce it but I tell you to double check um, just to make sure that everything fits. Now this is uh, good advice, but I'm addressing it on a part-by-part -part basis. Uh, I would actually recommend that prior to gluing any pieces together, you get the full set of 18 pins into all pieces. Um, remember, you only need to do one half of a piece with pins in it. Don't put pins in both halves, you're not going to be able to put them together. Um, but definitely get, uh, you know, a half of all six pieces onto, uh, with pins in them before you proceed. Um, some pin holes are a little, uh, are a little tight, some pin holes are a little broad, and so you want to be able to play around with pieces until you can get a set of pins that fit in all spaces. So please keep that in mind as you put it together. The body. So when you need to construct it, um, it's actually a very simple process. Um, obviously you've got two halves. Um, each with five holes, the pin holes. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take one of your pins and insert it into each hole. You want to make sure, uh, this is especially important if you print it yourself, that uh, your pins go in all of the that a pin fits in every hole, both sides. Um, why this is necessary is that there is a uh, ah, little tight one there. Okay, so there is this idea, um, not an idea, but a, 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 a result of 3D printing called elephant footing. That is to say, when you're heating something, and this is printed like this, flat, um, as it lays down the layers, uh, the top layers start to get a little heavy, and they press down on the bottom layers as well. If your your, your uh, printer isn't calibrated, sometimes it'll press down when laying down the plastic. So what do you do about this? Well, in general, you just kind of sand it off. Uh, but it comes into special note when you're looking at the pinholes. You see, because sometimes the uh, the surface of that pinhole here, right here, um, is actually a little. What's the word? Uh, it is actually has some of that elephant footing in it. So while the hole is perfectly sized, 
uh, perfectly capable of holding the pin, the entryway can't. So what you do is you take your X-Acto, and this is why I said you should need an X-Acto if you're printing for yourself. Um, if you're not printing for yourself, I should have done this job for you. Um, it's still recommended an X-Acto because nah, the pin should be almost the same, but I might have gotten a statistically you know, slightly smaller pin, and the pin you might be looking with is a slightly larger pin, and it doesn't quite work out. Um, but uh, you should have a pro you shouldn't have a problem if you're getting it from me. Uh, it's a one in a it's a large uh, I can't say one in a million, but uh, it, it, it's a rare occurrence. But uh, if you're printing this yourself, or you found uh, I had this problem and sent to you, take your your exacto knife, you bring it in, and you kind of just gouge the corner out. You're, you're, you're just cutting with the tip of your X-Acto knife and cutting the corner of that entry. If you go a little big on that cut, don't worry about it. Um, as well, don't worry if the pin is slightly loose when you do get it in there. Uh, the, these pins are not um, these pins are not precision uh, manufactured. They are not intended to produce a tight fit. Um, they can, depending on how, depending on the size of the pin and how the entrance goes. But uh, they do not require a large, a tight fit to function properly. So once you've got that done. You go through your other, um, all you do is you just put it in all your other holes. And this is weird. I thought I had this piece uh, perfect. Clearly, I'm wrong. Now, uh, you need to not be at an angle to get these in. Um, that's sometimes a problem. Um, so now, once you've checked each side, you've, te you've checked this one, you've checked the other one, um, you want to put five pins in one side of the piece. Now, uh, again, be careful when pulling pins out. You do not want to drop and lose a pin. I know I've, I've given you four spares, but I've only given you four spares. You need, or six spares, uh, you need 18 of them. So, you know, you don't, you, you can't afford to lose too many. Um, I know you can't see anything right now, I apologize about that. Alright, so now you've got five pins now you need to take your glue as I've mentioned before I recommend E6000 uh, it's a strong flexible glue that will resist impact um, all you need to do is uh, apply the glue liberally to all surfaces. I recommend you actually put in more than you need. It's gonna get squished out when you put these together. That's okay, in fact, that's good, uh, because it'll fill in uh, a lot of imperfections. Uh, the print surface is good, but occasionally uh, the edges don't quite line up right. Having the glue come out like that after it dries, you can get a really uh, good surface by uh, sanding or filing that away or even cutting it or pulling it um, you'll you'll fill in any potential gaps there and so it actually uh, balances out so after you put the glue on it and I know I haven't done it uh, um, unfortunately I had to redo the videos where I, I actually glued some, this together uh, this piece I have right now uh, 
can't be glued together. It needs to go to a client uh, unassembled. So you put it on top of each other, get the pins aligned. And um, you have a little bit of flex in it, but not much. Now it's important that you're going to start getting goo coming out of the sides. So you want to, so be careful. You don't want to get it all over your hands. But then comes the important part, clamping. Um, I, as I said, you can get some cheap clamps on Amazon or Harbor Freight. Um, uh, the, get you get the right ones, and they can be they can be pretty tough. But even uh, cheapo ones like these can work. Um, if you've only got small clamps like these, uh, make sure you clamp all um, all the angles. So you know you get this you get this bar. You get this bar here and this bar here and this bar here and probably right out here um, you want one right here uh, to make sure the whole thing stays together if you've got bigger clamps uh, I highly rec that can support it I highly recommend clamping your spheres um, these clamp this clamp is actually almost not big enough I thankfully have some bigger clamps yeah they they're actually don't have ah, there we go well I'm gonna use this one because it's a little less unwieldy now that's important because as you'll see the spheres have a tendency to want to uh, separate. That's partially because of how they get put together um, or they get printed. Uh, taking them off the bed sometimes warps this a little bit. But you can put pressure on that and it works. Putting pressure back, uh, back here right at the base can work if you've only got, uh, if you've only got small clamps. But as you can see, a slight seam is appearing, um, and uh, you might not have a perfect fit in that case. Um, so let me uh, show you what a fully clamped one looks like. Um, the body needs a lot of clamps. There's a lot of surface area. You want to get as much of it clamped as possible. Um, very, very critical. Um, you need to clamp there we go you need to clamp this lightning bolt um, it one of the one of the reasons this is such there I warp the device warp it pulling it off is that I've had to do make a lot of work to keep these adhered to the bed and from warping and unfortunately pull, pulling them off the process of pulling them off does institute a small amount of warping. Um, it's generally not noticeable, but if you don't clamp this lightning bolt, it will pull apart and it will be noticeable. So make sure whatever you do, you got to get pressure on either side of this uh, lightning bolt to hold it together. All right, so curves. <sighs> Again, it's the same process. Um, your twos is apparently what I'm starting out with. You take your pin and you put it into the holes. Make sure they fit. Because um, again, sometimes you get a bit of that elephant footing in the, uh, in the holes and uh, you can't actually put these pins in. Um, a pliers is sometimes useful in this step. If you can't get a pin out, I mean, just leave it there. There's no reason to force it out. 
but uh, if you really don't want to keep uh, forcing pins in and losing them um, and, and having to pull out another one, or you're like me and just weird about how you approach this, uh, you a pliers is used, can be used to pull the ones that are a little bit of a tight fit. Uh, I don't. Ha it turns out with this one, I'm not having to cut out any uh, of my holes. Uh, that they, they all seem to have come together pretty nicely. So again, you put the the pins in. You take your E6000 glue. Um, just go wild. Uh, notable thing. When these are together, there are surfaces on both pieces that are exposed. It's only just this curve here um, and a little bit on the base side that needs to be glued. Um, I recommend gluing the... Uh, I recommend gluing the tine side and getting heavy use in here and just past the uh, the, the the pin on the tine side, and that should be that should give you good coverage. Uh, as I said before, when using the E6000, I do like to have overflow. Um, overflow will uh, allow us to can be sanded off with the metal file, cut off with the X-Acto, uh, many other uh, approaches. You can just pick it off with your fingers if you got fingernails. Um, and uh, it produces a better, more contiguous surface when you do it that way. So, you put it together, squeeze. Um, if you're using that technique, wipe. Uh, some of that excess glue off there. Try not to go too deep, or you're going to start brewing, or you're going to start getting into the into it and losing that critical, critical um, overflow that provides us with that um, contiguous surface. And then you clamp. Of course, if you're using a fast-acting glue, the clamping step is not necessary. Um, I prefer to use two clamps, one at either end of the, uh, the overlapping surface. Um, now for the tines. Well, let me first say it's the exact same process with your ones. So, uh... Uh, to the tines. All right, so your tines. Your tines each have three holes. Um, history has shown that the three holes are... Uh, you need holes in all three to get a proper alignment. I guess perhaps I could have removed the, the uh, middle hole. Um, originally, the design only had the two... But this end was a little too wild and didn't align uh, 100%. So we added a third one near the end. Um, now, uh, these tines um, are experiencing a bit of elephant footing. Um, so allow me to remind you, this is where the X-Acto knife comes in handy. And again, I'm going to try to test this before I send them out to you, but I can't always do that. Um, I'm not always going to be perfect. Having an X-Acto knife is a good thing. So you just kind of get in there and cut that corner. Um, the goal... To kind of cut away the corners of the opening, that is, just the edges of the opening. Widening that hole because the interior is normally good. 
it's normally just that entrance that is a problem. So allow me to finish this and then I'll uh, once again demonstrate uh, putting how uh, to glue these together. All right, so now I've got uh, the tines. This is the long piece. Um, now, I recommend you glue the short piece because then you're not going to get any glue on the exposed surface as the attachment point. Um, and again, put it out there. Don't go, I mean, don't go way overboard, but... You know, if you go a little overboard, that's really okay because, again, we're expecting to get that um, surface, that overflow to fill in any minor gaps in the print. Um, if you have this laying down like this, you can just easily lay this down, snaps together, Congratulations, you have a piece. Um, I use two to three uh, clamps on this. You definitely want to clamp the ends. And I like to clamp the middle as well because you want to get some, you because this is producing uneven pressure. So you want clamp right there in the middle. And there you go, you have a, you, you know, yeah, it's, it's not perfect, but who cares? Um, the pressure is going to, over this, over this is going to be fine to hold these together while the glue dries. Repeat this for your other two tines, and you will have everything. I realize it's a lot of clamps. You might even have to spread this over, you know, more days to get, because uh, you don't have enough clamps. Um, Harbor Freight, I mean, they'll, they'll give you like 50 of those clamps for 10 bucks or something. But, uh, you know, if you're trying to use something more substantial and you don't have the, the money, it's okay. Um, you know, it's just how fast you can put these together. I know you're eager to have your gun together. Um, but patience is the key to having a nice, um, excellent looking product. Um, so that's all for part one. Uh, part two... As I said before, that's going to be to put the uh, is going to be to put the side the tine curves um, onto the base of the gun. Um, I'm also going to cover some uh, finishing steps you're going to want to do before you make that process. Uh, you want to have a you want to, you don't want to have to wait until it's one big ungainly thing before you start thinking about making some of these seams uh, perfect. So you'll want to, so before you get really into part two, I'm going to be giving uh, some steps on how to finish the seams so that they uh, aren't noticeable. Get rid of all that excess glue. See you then.